Awakening Media presents Mothers of the Believers Lives of the Wives of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by Imam Suhaib Webb Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man ittaba'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawm al-deen Wa salam taslima kathira Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome to the series of lives of the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ummahatul Mu'mineen. In this series, we want to talk about the fourth wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, our mother Hafsa bint Umar radiallahu anha. Imam al-Dhahabi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says in his famous book, Siyara ala Manubala, about our mother Hafsa bint Umar, Sawwama qawwama taqiyya naqiyya min ahl al-jannah, tilmeedha najeeba fi madrasat al-nisai ahl al-bayt. He said, subhanAllah, about our mother Hafsa, that when she was from the women who fasted and prayed in the night, and from those women who feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and from those women, from the wives of the Prophet Ali wasalam, who received instruction from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He said about her that she memorized 60 hadith on behalf of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and that she was considered one of the ulama amongst the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. وَكَانَتْ حَافِظَةُ الْقُرْآنِ And she was from those people who memorized the entire book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our mother Hafsa bint Umar, who subhanAllah, nowadays we find many people saying that the woman has no place in Islamic work. We even find Muslims saying this. But subhanAllah, after the death of her father Umar radiallahu anhu, she played an immense role in the history of our ummah. And that Hafsa bint Umar, a woman, was given the only copy of the Qur'an to guard. And that's why Imam al-Dhahabi says, وَكَانَتْ حَارِسَةُ الْقُرْآنِ That our mother Hafsa radiallahu anha was a guardian of the Qur'an. After all of the wonderful descriptions that Imam al-Dhahabi, he gives about our mother, he finishes by saying, وَهِيَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ That our mother Hafsa is from the people of paradise. Now insha'Allah ta'ala, let's spend some time walking in the shade of the life of our mother, the fourth wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hafsa bint Umar radiallahu anha. Let's talk about subhanAllah some of the reasons for her greatness. Because greatness does not come out of a vacuum. The first reason for her greatness is her father, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. SubhanAllah, if you want to know the greatness of Umar, Go to the famous hadith of the Prophet وسلم, which is found in the Sahih of Imam al-Bukhari, which is related on behalf of Ibn Umar, the son of Umar anhu, who he says that one day I heard the Prophet وسلم, telling the people that he was sleeping and in this sleep he saw a dream. And in this dream the Prophet وسلم, was given a glass of milk and he drank this glass of milk until subhanAllah he began to see the milk coming from underneath his fingernails, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then he says, ثُمَّ أَعْطَيْتُ فَضْلِ عَمْرَ بْنُ خَطَّابِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ Then he says, I gave it to my blessing. And who is the blessing of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? It is Umar ibn Khattab, رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ The companions of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they said to the Prophet, what is it that you gave him? What, is the, what does this milk represent? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Al-ilm, it is knowledge. Subhanallah, Qari ibn Arabi, rahimahullah, he said about this hadith, Al-laban, rizq, yakhluquhu allahu tayyiban bayna akhbath min dam wa farth. Kal-ilm, nurun yudhirahu allahu fi dhulumat al-jahl. Qari ibn Arabi, the great Maliki scholar, he said something very beautiful about this milk that the Prophet ﷺ gave to Umar radiallahu anhu. He said, milk is a provision which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created pure between blood and feces. Because we know, as mentioned in Surah Al-Nahl, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّ لَكُمْ فِي الْأَنْعَامِ لَعِبْرَةِ نُسْكِيكُمْ مِمَّا فِي بُطُونِهِ Bain 
شاربين. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that indeed in the cattle there is a sign for you. نُسْقِيكُمْ مِمَّا فِي بُطُونِ That we give you something to drink from the stomach of this cow. بَيْنَ فَرْثْ وَدَّبْ Which comes between feces and blood. What comes between this feces and blood? لَبَنًا خَالِسًا Pure milk. So subhanAllah, Qari ibn Arabi, rahmatullah alayhi, as quoted by Ibn Hajr, he says that this milk that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, it came between blood and feces. Just like knowledge, he said, subhanAllah, the knowledge that's given to the person, it can bring them from a dark and evil society into a pure upright nature. And this is what happened to Umar radiallahu anhu, who before he was lost, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided him, and he became one of the greatest students of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And because of this knowledge, he came out of the society of jahiliyyah, between blood and feces, and became one of the greatest human beings that ever lived. So the first thing which we can attribute to the greatness of Hafsa radiallahu anha was her father. You know, subhanAllah, Umar radiallahu anhu, he was one of the few people who lived in Mecca who can read and write. And subhanAllah, also Hafsa bint Umar radiallahu anha, she learned how to read and write at the hands of her parents. So the greatness of our mother Hafsa radiallahu anha, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, can be attributed to her parents. Umar radiallahu anhu, he was one of the few people who could read and write, and that's why he was the ambassador of the Quraysh. And also we find later on that Hafsa bint Umar, as well as Abdullah bin Umar, the sons of Umar and daughters of Umar, all of them could write, and we can assume that they learned this from their parents. Hafsa bint Umar, actually she was married before she married the Prophet sallallahu And her first husband, his name was Khunais radiallahu anhu. Khunais became a Muslim on the hand of Abu Bakr and died after the Battle of Badr due to an injury. And he was from the Ashab al Hijratain, those people who migrated twice, once to Ethiopia and again to Medina. Subhanallah, when Hafsa bint Umar lost her first husband, she was only 19 years old. And Subhanallah, she was living in Medina, a strange city, without a husband. And Subhanallah, brothers, who is it that got her back? It was her father. After she completed her adda, her father Umar radiallahu anhu, he set out to find her a good husband. And subhanallah, the first person that he went to was Uthman bin Affan radiallahu anhu. And he came to Uthman bin Affan, and after talking with him for some time, he said to him, O oh Uthman, if you would like, I can marry Hafsa to you. Uthman bin Affan, he told Umar radiallahu anhu, I'm not really interested in getting married right now. And you know what happened? Umar, he became incensed. He became very angry with Uthman bin Affan. He left Uthman bin Affan and then he went to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. He came to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and he said, Ya Abu Bakr, oh Abu Bakr, if you like, I can marry you to Hafsa, my daughter. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he also responded similarly to the response of Uthman bin Affan by saying to Umar, you know, I'm not really interested in getting married right now. And this only increased the anger of Umar radiallahu anhu, and he became so angry that he went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and he began to complain, these two guys, they don't want to marry my daughter. What's going on? Subhanallah, we take a very important lesson here. Why was Umar angry? Was he angry because of his daughter? No. You know why he was angry? Because he lost two good men. Nowadays, subhanallah, when a brother wants to get married, instead of looking at his qualities and his character and the type of Muslim he is, the first thing we want to know as parents is, you got one year salary that you can take care of my baby? Or what's your job so I can retire earlier and you can take care of me and I can retire and hang out with you and the grandkids? But here we see Umar radiallahu anhu, he's upset. Why? Why is he upset? Because he lost two good men. So he came to the Prophet sallallahu and this is a short time after the battle of Badr and he began to complain. What's up with these two guys? How come they're saying no to me? 
Then the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he smiled. And he said to Umar radiallahu anhu, Hafsa will marry one better than Uthman. And Uthman will marry one better than Hafsa. Then Umar radiallahu anhu, he understood that the Prophet sallallahu was making his intentions on Hafsa. And that the Prophet sallallahu was going to marry his daughter, his second daughter, after Ruqayya, who was the first wife of Uthman bin Affan, his second daughter now to Uthman bin Affan. And Umar radiallahu anhu, he became so happy that he said, Takbir, Allahu Akbar. Why he was so happy that his daughter Hafsa bint Umar was going to marry Al-Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Their marriage, mashallah ta'ala, was a good marriage. And we know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just as we mentioned in the life of Aisha radiallahu anha, the first thing he did to establish this good relationship with his wife was to lead by actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu lima taqoolu ma la taf'aloon kabara maqatan inda Allahi an taqoolu ma la taf'aloon O you who believe, why do you say what you don't do? Indeed it is hated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you say what you don't do. The first thing, brother, that you have to do when you get married is to lead by your example, not by your words. Immediately the Prophet sallallahu after marrying our mother Hafsa bint Umar, he began to lead by example. And if you look at many of the hadith which Hafsa she narrated on behalf of the Prophet sallallahu we see subhanallah that the Prophet والسلام, led by action. For example, her hadith of how the Prophet والسلام, used to eat. She says the Prophet والسلام, used to use his right hand for eating, his right hand for drinking, and his left hand for cleaning himself. Subhanallah, she used to ask the Prophet والسلام, questions. And you know the Prophet والسلام, nowadays sometimes if we ask you know, people questions, they get angry at us. Sometimes, subhanAllah, if a sister, she asks her husband questions, he's like, you don't respect me, girl. You're supposed to make sujood to me. Just shut your mouth and make the biryani and step out of my face. But here we see the Prophet wasallam. he's not like you and I. He's not this, you know, this person who gets upset when people ask him questions. One day, the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, he was sitting with our mother Hafsa bint Amr, and he said, I hope, insha'Allah, that none of the people who participated in the battle of Uhud or the Hudaybiyah will have to enter into the hellfire. Then Hafsa radiallahu anha, she said to the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, she said, doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Maryam that indeed there is not one from the people except that they will have to see the hellfire. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he responded back to her and said, didn't you read what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran? Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he's going to save those people of piety from the hellfire. SubhanAllah, look at this discussion between husband and wife. How many husbands and wives in these days and times that we live in can sit and talk about verses of the Quran. Instead of arguing about who's gonna watch their favorite Bollywood movie tonight, when are we gonna have a discussion about the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Instead of sitting around and you know doing something which is not beneficial, look here subhanAllah at the Prophet والسلام, and his wife, how they're talking and what they're talking about. The book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hafsa bint Umar radiallahu anha, she had the unique opportunity of living with the Prophet ﷺ. And we find that this idea of him leading by example is exhibited in her narrations. For example, Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhu, in a famous authentic hadith, he was narrating 
the Sunnah prayers of the Prophet ﷺ. How many prayers before Fajr? How many prayers before and after Dhuhr? How many prayers after Maghrib? How many prayers after Isha? And then at the end of this hadith, he says that the Prophet ﷺ used to pray two rak'ah after Maghrib and two rak'ah after Isha. And he said that this was narrated to me by my sister Hafsa bint Umar radiallahu anha. Hafsa bint Umar, she said, subhanallah, that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu toward the end of his life, he would pray his qiyam layl sitting, not standing. So she used to see the Prophet sallallahu and the Prophet sallallahu used to lead by example. The first thing we have to do with our wives and with our husbands, and with our children and with the people around us is to lead by example, to let our actions speak louder than our words. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to teach her to be sincere to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And that's why we have the famous hadith which the ulama, they used with regards to the rules of fasting. Related to us by our mother Hafsa bint Umar radiallahu anha, who says that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَن لَمْ يُجْمَعْ صِيَامْ قَبَلَ الْفَجْرِ فَلَا صِيَامَ لَهُ Whoever didn't gather themselves together, and here it means make their intention every night before the time of fasting, then they have no fast at all. He used to teach her radiallahu anha to strive in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She says that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to fast every Monday and Thursday for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to be loving to her. That's why we find the hadith of our mother Hafsa radiallahu anha who says that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he used to kiss his wife's wahua sa'im even while he was fasting. Even he would exhibit this love for our mother radiallahu anha. We talked earlier about the incident where the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had separated himself from his wives when we discussed the life of our mother Aisha radiallahu anha. Also our mother Hafsa radiallahu anha, she was affected by this incident. When the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ had separated from his wives, and this separation was around 29 days. Actually, people in the mosque of the Prophet ﷺ, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they begin to say amongst themselves that the Prophet ﷺ had divorced his wives. And Umar radiallahu anhu, what was Umar's connection to knowledge? What was Umar's connection to knowledge? We can see in this hadith, he says, in narrating this hadith, that he used to have a buddy from the Ansar. And he said, each day we would take turns. One of us would go and listen to the lectures of the Prophet Sallallahu while the other one went and did his work. And then the next day they would switch. But before they switched, they would sit and share with each other the information that they heard from the Prophet Sallallahu SubhanAllah, look at this hirs of ilm that Umar had, this dedication to knowledge. And that's why other ulama said that the Prophet والسلام, in that dream, he gave milk to Umar. Why? Because how you get milk? You got to milk the cow. You got to put in work. So how does someone get knowledge? How does someone increase their knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by talking about it? No, they got to put in work. So Umar radiallahu anhu, even he used to switch off days with this brother. And one day the brother, he came to Umar radiallahu anhu and he said to him, I have heard something very, very vast. I have heard something very, very, very important that I need to tell you. And then he told Umar radiallahu anhu, that the people are saying that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has divorced his wives. Now Umar radiallahu anhu, he became alarmed because this is his daughter Hafsa. And immediately he went to Aisha, the daughter of Abu Bakr, and he asked her what is going on and she was unable to tell him. Then he went to his own daughter and he began to give her a hard time and she began to cry, Hafsa bint Umar. He was trying to check her and make sure that she's on the right path and fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, there's a good lesson we can take from this. We ask a major Muslim counselor in North America, what is one of the main causes for husband and wives to divorce in North America? And he said 89% of separations in North America are due to the relatives' bad, evil outside influences. Look at Umar radiallahu anhu. As soon as he heard about this, he didn't side with his daughter. No, he went to his daughter and he said, Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make sure that you're being a good wife to your husband. 
Nowadays, it's the opposite. We hear something like this. If it's our daughter, we show up at the brother's house with a 24 barrel shotgun like, yo, what's up? Come outside. I got to holler at you for a minute. But here we see Umar radiallahu anhu keeping his subhanAllah, his wits on, using his intelligence and going to his daughter and trying to find out what's going on. Then Umar, he went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he asked permission to enter into the room of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And he came into the room of the Prophet sallallahu and the only thing he found in the room, a small mat on the ground and a small vase with water in it. And he saw Al-Habib sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And imagine now if you're in the shoes of Umar, looking at the face of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the nur coming from the face of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And he noticed that the marks of the mat were left on the back of the Prophet And then Umar, he began to cry. The Prophet he said, Ya Umar, why are you crying? He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, the King of Persia, he has all of these wonderful aspects of dunya, this palace and carpets and everything. And you are the Messenger of Allah. And look, subhanAllah, how you're living. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he said to Umar radiallahu anhu, ala tarda an takuna lana al-akhirah wa lahum dunya He said, are you not happy to know that indeed for us is the hereafter and for these people is this dunya, is this life. Then Umar radiallahu anhu, he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is it true that you have divorced your wives? The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he responded to him and said, no. And Umar, he said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. He was so happy to know that his daughter was gonna stay with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And SubhanAllah, it was at that moment that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he revealed some verses in Surah Al-Tahrim. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says to the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and in particularly saying to Aisha and to Hafsa, Aisha the daughter of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, and Hafsa the daughter of Umar radiallahu anhu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Asa rabbuhu in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the verses which say in Surah Al-Tahrim, perhaps the Lord of Muhammad sallallahu will divorce you and replace you with wives which are better than yourselves. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes for the sisters who want to know what type of wives you should be, here's the verse in Surah Al-Tahrim, Muslimat, a woman who submits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Mu'minat, a woman who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Qanitat, an obedient woman, and the ulama said obedient to Allah and obedient to her husband. A woman who is abidat, who is the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ta'ibat, a woman who repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sa'ihat, a woman who fasts and struggles in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thayyibatin wa abakara, and pure unadulterated woman. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent these verses to check the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed Umar, of his decision not to divorce his wives. As we said earlier, Umar, he praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he went to the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he yelled as loud as he could, saying that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has not divorced his wives. 
that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu has not divorced his wives. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verse which is found in Sultan Nisa. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا جَاءَهُمْ أَمْرٌ مِّنَ الْأَمْنِ أَوِ الْخَوْفِ أَذَاعُوا بِهِ وَلَوْ رَدُّوهُ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ وَإِلَى أُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْهُمْ لَعَلِمَهُ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَمْرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when the order or when an affair came to the people, if they would have gone back to the Prophet وسلم, or to those people in charge, those people with knowledge would have made this thing clear for the people. This verse, it was sent in connection with this incident that happened to Hafsa bint Umar radiallahu anha. The next important incident that happened in the life of our mother Hafsa bint Umar radiallahu anha is the incident of Tahrim. You know the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he would try to visit his wives as best he could uh, on a daily basis in order to keep the good relationship with his wives. And Hafsa bint Umar radiallahu anha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed her to obtain some nice honey from the desert. And we know that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he used to love honey. And because of this, he would go to her home and he would stay a little bit longer and take some of the honey from his wife and spend some time with his family as any person would do. But some of the wives of the Prophet wasallam, namely Aisha and Zainab bin Jash, they became jealous. And they devised a plan that the Prophet wasallam, when he came to them, that his breath smelled like Mughafir. And Mughafir, it is a flower in the desert which releases a type of honey which causes your breath to be really, really, really funky. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he came to his wives and they kind of distanced themselves from him. And he was saying, what's going on? And they would tell him, your breath smells like maghafir. Your breath smells like maghafir. Your breath smells like maghafir. The Prophet sallallahu immediately, he came to the conclusion that the honey who was taken from his wife Hafsa bint Umar was making his breath bad. So what did he do? And this is a very important lesson in da'wah. He said, I am no longer going to take this honey anymore. In fact, I make this honey haram on myself. He did not mean haram in the sharia sense of the word, but he meant in the linguistic sense of the word that I'm not going to take this honey anymore. What's a quick lesson we can take from this? Is the importance of the da'ya to have a good appearance and to be clean. It's very important. Here we see the Prophet ﷺ, just his breath and he's concerned about his breath so he says, I'm no longer going to take this honey anymore. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent some verses in regards to this. And it is the first verse and on found in Surah Al-Tahrim. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya O oh, Prophet of Allah, why do you make haram what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made halal seeking to please your wives? And this is the incident of tahrim which happened to the Prophet alayhi salatu salam while he was living with our mother Hafsa bint Umar radiallahu anha. Her reaction to the death of the Prophet وسلم, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he taught his wives that if anyone dies, if any person dies, it is not allowable for anyone who believes in Allah in the last day that they should mourn this person more than three days. That doesn't mean after three days that you don't feel sad and sometimes you don't shed tears. This is not what that means, but it means to go overboard in your mourning for more than a period of three days. In fact, the Muslims should not go overboard in their mourning in any period. After the death of the Prophet ﷺ, Hafsa bint Umar, she lived for two years under the Khilafah of Abu Bakr and then under the Khilafah of her father Umar. And subhanAllah, when her father died, we can see this bond that he built with her. When he died, the narrators tell us that she cried and she mourned so severely 
that the companions of the Prophet وسلم, they had to check her and remind her about the etiquettes of grieving for the dead and deceased. And subhanAllah, we see from this the great connection that she had with her father radiallahu anhu. Perhaps subhanAllah, the greatest accomplishment of our mother Hafsa came after the death of her father. We know during the Habr Ridda, the wars of apostasy during the time of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, that many Hufad of Quran, many of those people who memorized the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were killed, especially fighting Musaylam to Kadhab. And we know that Umar radiallahu anhu, he came to Abu Bakr and he encouraged him to have the Quran compiled in a book form. Abu Bakr, after some time, he agreed. And after the death of Abu Bakr, this Quran, this only copy of the Quran was left with Umar. And after the death of Umar, this Quran was left with who? For those brothers who say that the women have no place in the MSA, or that women have no place in the Dawah on campuses or in the Islamic centers, let them listen to this story. That Umar radiallahu anhu, upon his death, who did he leave the only copy of the Quran with? He left it with our mother Hafsa bint Umar radiallahu anha. Can you imagine for those people who say that Islam did not give women dignity, did not give women their place in society, look here that subhanallah, our mother Hafsa bint Umar is being given the only copy of the Quran that exists by her father Umar radiallahu anhu. You know subhanallah, even during the time of Uthman bin Affan, he used to ask her permission to look at that Qur'an and use the Qur'an. And people used to come to her house and write pages from that Qur'an and read from that Qur'an and study from that Qur'an. And as we mentioned, Hafsa bint Umar was one of the five wives of the Prophet wasallam to memorize the entire Qur'an. Thus, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose our mother Hafsa to be the Harisa of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. During the time of the fitna which took place between Ali radiallahu anhu and Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, we mentioned earlier that Aisha bint Abi Bakr, she went to Basra and actually she did not do this alone. Hafsa bint Umar, she was unable to go, but she wished that she could have gone and joined Aisha radiallahu anha in the battle of the camel, try to make peace between the companions of the Prophet Our mother Hafsa, she died 45 years after the migration of the Prophet and after the loss of her husband she lived with her brother Zayd ibn Khattab عنه, and she was buried by Zayd ibn Khattab and Abdullah ibn Umar upon her death. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with our mother Hafsa bint Umar radiallahu anha and we ask that our brothers and sisters can take this important lesson of how this woman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, used her to protect the Qur'an and to guard the Qur'an, that we can apply this lesson in the place of practice for our Muslim sisters in today's times. فَجَزَاكَمْ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا أَسْتَغْفِرُكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ